Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Peacock with Tennessee Oncology. I'm a medical oncologist and have been in Nashville for the last 15 years. Currently, there are 2.5 million breast cancer survivors in the United States. We expect that in the year 2010, there will be 210,000 cases of breast cancer diagnosed. There will be an additional 50,000 cases of carcinoma in situ diagnosed. This is the um, type of breast cancer which doesn't metastasize or spread, but still requires local therapy. Lately, there's been a lot of controversy about um, mammography and early detection of breast cancer. For many years, we have recognized that screening mammography is important for finding breast cancers early. In fact, since the 1990s, breast cancer incidence and death has decreased. The incidence of breast cancer has decreased because um, many women have opted not to use hormone replacement therapy based on the results of the Women's Health Study. This study showed that the use of estrogen plus progesterone in postmenopausal women did increase the risk of breast cancer occurrence in this group of women. At that point, many physicians and many women decided not to use adjuvant hormonal therapy any longer, and so currently um, our breast cancer rates have decreased. However, also of note is the fact that um, deaths from breast cancer have decreased primarily in women under the age of 50 because of early detection due to screening mammography. The current recommendation is that a woman discuss with her doctor whether or not she wants to have a mammogram and if the doctor thinks it's appropriate in that decade between 40 and 50. For women over the age of 50, mam mammography is important and we're still not quite sure what to do with our most elderly patients, those women over the age of 75. Um, this, the, recommend, the recommended standard at this time is for those women to continue with an, annual mammography, but even this is being examined more closely. Currently, um, breast MRI is not appropriate as a screening tool, but it's very helpful as a diagnostic tool. We also utilize a technique called ultrasound to help us um, clear up questions when, when an abnormality is found on mammogram or when there's a palpable breast lump and nothing is found on mammogram. It's important to remember that not all cancers are discovered on um, mammogram, and if you have a breast lump, if a woman feels something in her breast, it's important to get that evaluated, even if the mammogram says everything is fine. The goals of treatment for breast cancer are myriad, but primarily we want to provide the best treatment, the most effective treatment with the fewest side effects. When we're talking about treatments, it's important to distinguish whether or not we're giving adjuvant therapy, that means post-surgical therapy, in an attempt to reduce the risk of breast cancer recurring, or we're talking about treatments for metastatic disease, that is when breast cancer has already spread outside the breast and adjacent lymph nodes, and when we need, disease, when we need treatments that help delay death and delay and prevent symptoms from metastatic breast cancer. Currently, we know that estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor evaluations are important for helping us determine um, candidates for endocrine therapies. We have also learned that the use of a marker called HER2 NU helps us select out patients which will benefit from a life saving therapy in the adjuvant setting called Herceptin. We've also, we also understand that women with triple negative breast cancer may need more aggressive therapy early on in the adjuvant setting. This group of patients um, can be cured with adjuvant chemotherapy, but when they relapse, their cancers tend to relapse early, and they tend to, um, they tend to um, uh, progress very quickly with um, our standard therapies. We're really working very hard to find new therapies that may help these patients more than what we've ever um, experienced before. In this special group of triple negative breast cancer patients, we have, a, we have several trials um, going on in the um, metastatic setting. There's an exciting new agent called a PARP inhibitor that may actually um, result in very good um, long-term outcomes for these patients. Um, currently, there is a phase three trial which is um, um, starting up, and we hope to have results from our phase two trials very, very soon. Oftentimes when I talk to my patients about participation in clinical trials, they may answer with a, a, a statement back that tells me they don't want to be a guinea pig. They want the most effective therapy there is. I have to tell them we don't have the most effective therapy there is. 
we still can't cure metastatic breast cancer. We're still looking for the best treatment for that. We hope someday that we'll be able to do that, but until we have more answers in the clinical science arena, we're, we're not going to be able to solve this problem. So what are some of the long-term issues facing women who've been treated for breast cancer? In my mind, the most, one of the most important and most overwhelming things for young women or women who are premenopausal when their cancer is diagnosed is really dealing with the symptoms of menopause that come along with treatment for breast cancer. For women who are very young, in their 30s and early 40s, oftentimes the goal is to render them menopausal in an attempt to reduce the risk of their cancer coming back. This means the early onset of hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, emotional instability, and irritability, as well as cessation of um, menstrual cycles. This can be really tough when you're, when you're a lot younger. It's hard enough when you're 50 and starting to go through um, menopause naturally, but when you're thrown into menopause because of the effects of your treatments, that can be um, life-changing and overwhelming. Currently, we know that using estrogen in women who are suffering from symptoms of menopause related to their breast cancer treatment is just not something we want to entertain. We know that using estrogen for women who have endocrine-sensitive tumors will often um, cause a recurrence of, of their cancer. Unfortunately, we have not been able to identify what that risk actually is, and so we can't tell women that if they use a preparation that has a hormone in it, that they may have a 1% risk or a 5% risk or a 10% risk of their cancer coming back because we just don't have those trials. I realize this sounds a lot like common sense, but managing your diet and exercise is really one of the best ways to manage um, menopausal symptoms, such as hot flashes and problems with insomnia. We've learned that regular exercise, 30 minutes to an hour a day, five days a week at least, helps to decrease hot flashes. Many women have found this strategy helpful. You don't have to train for a marathon, but regular walking, swimming, or bike riding may um, help quite a bit with, with the management of the, these symptoms. It's also important that no more than 20% of your da daily dietary calories come from fat. It seems that eating more fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains actually decrease vasomotor symptoms such as hot flashes, cold flushes, and mood swings. Pharmacologic interventions may help as well. Drugs like Effexor may decrease the frequency of hot flashes, and although it may not eliminate them, we may see a marked improvement and um, this will result in overall improvement in the quality of life. It may seem a little odd, but we also realize now that maintaining bone health is very important um, for women who've been diagnosed with breast cancer. We're learning now that the, the tie between um, breast cancer recurrence and bone health is much stronger than we ever believed. We feel that it's important to maintain um, normal bone health because this may, in fact, um, prevent or cause resistance of um, micrometastases from setting up shop, so to speak, in the bone marrow. If we can keep the bone marrow environment healthy, then we may prevent these micrometastases from growing and dividing and eventually spreading to other areas. The way we do this now, in a practical manner, is making sure women have plenty of calcium and vitamin D on board. And that also, if their situation warrants, that we use drugs called bisphosphonates, like Actinel or Fosamax or Boniva, to try and maintain normal bone health. Currently, there's some evidence to suggest that medici medicines like this may actually result in an improvement in overall survival, and we're preparing to launch an adjuvant trial um, for women with, for premenopausal women. Um, w with breast cancer to see if uh, this intervention actually makes a difference in the long term. The Mini Pearl Cancer Foundation provides support services for patients with, for all patients with cancer related problems and their families. For more information, you can look them up at minipearl.org. Um, there will be valuable resources for nutrition, for social support, and um, uh, also valuable clinical trial information.